Hello, Team Breaker. Good morning, Team Breaker! How are you doing? Good. I'm doing well. I just woke up and um, I was feeling a little sick yesterday, so I took some, some NyQuil, went to bed, slept a good while, and uh, I'm awake in the morning, which is good. And um, I'm not going to... Times, times got crunched up, so I'm going to do you guys a one-shot today, but we're going to talk about um, some stuff, especially from the comments. So, because a couple people made some pretty important um, replies in the comments yesterday, I would like to sort of talk about them and just clear things up. Because like I said yesterday, people are a little unclear as to what I'm talking about when I critique Swotor. Um, I'll get to this idea that I'm censoring myself later, but um, I just wanted to, to mention this, uh, there's a comment here from a, a person who I admire. I admire this person when they, when they comment because they always have something important to say. This person's uh, YouTube name is Psycho Wetback, which is, which is funny. Um, but uh, this is his comment. Uh, he says this, quote, This is what's going to happen. Guild Wars 2 will come out, and then Mr. Panda will already be out. People will try Guild Wars 2 for about a month or so, and then keep it on their hard drives because it's fl free to play, right? Um, then when you find yourself playing with no one who you know because they're all doing arenas and would and world pvp and bgs you'll be like well i guess it's time for warrior pvp and i'm glad to see you're sticking to your guns on the coverage but honestly it will have no impact on the pvp community sorry uh good luck have fun i don't get maybe maybe i'm not reading this properly you'll find yourself playing with no one you know because they're all doing arenas and world PvP and BGs. Are you talking about how everybody's gonna be doing playing is gonna be playing WoW World PvP and Arenas and BGs? Because of Pandera coming out? Like right next to Guild Wars 2 launch, hopefully. Hopefully. I hope Guild Wars 2 launches within like six months. I would I would be ecstatic if Guild Wars 2 launched in six months, but there's no telling. There's no way we can guess a timeline until um the beta comes out. But, uh, and it will have no impact on the PvP community. Um how do I word this? Um, Guild Wars 2 brings so many new ways to play an MMO that it will have a significant impact on the PvP community in general. From rank 1 players to even the, the most like newly interested um, PvP player. You know what I mean? So, I, if, you, if you get what I'm saying, like the, new, like the newest, most curious person about player versus player combat. So, yeah, no... I don't know if it's because you don't understand what Guild Wars 2 brings or how the game is structured or or what, but it will bring a significant impact to the PvP community. And that's what I enjoy about it because it's so different. Now, whether or not these changes are going to be improvements over um, the current PvP system is unknown for now, but, but, but when we see and hear how the combat is going to work um, in the game, in theory, in our heads... It makes a whole lot of sense to a lot of people who PvP. That's why there's so much positive um, reaction to Guild Wars 2's PvP combat, as opposed to what we've been doing forever and forever. Like, for example, there's no auto-attacking Guild Wars 2. Granted, there's no auto-attacking in SWOTOR either. Um, but Guild Wars 2 offers a different... Uh, it offers not a different, but a, an extra feature to the combat where you can dodge roll away from skills. And you can dodge out of telegraphable skills. For example, warriors have charge skills. Not like charge like, shoo, but they have charge skills where like, if I'm going to hit you, huh, like if I'm going to hit you like this, the longer I hold the button down, bam, the harder I'll hit you towards the end. But if I only hold the button down a little bit, then I hit you. It doesn't hit you for as much. You know what I'm saying? Tried to hit my... Probably look like an idiot, but, um, you know what I'm saying? With a telegraphable skill, so if I knock you and you can't move it, I'm just charging up my slam hit, and I'm going to hit you with it, then you're fucked. But if if I'm not playing correctly and you can move the fuck out of it, move out of it if you're smart. And that's cool because you have that option. And those kinds of mechanics are interwoven into um, Guild Wars 2 play where there's... Um, there's you you Skilled players can combat non-skilled players, and that's what's interesting, so... Again, I'm glad you commented, but I don't really understand. Oh, free, as far as free-to-play, it is not free-to-play in the traditional sense of free-to-play. Like, 
I don't consider it free to play. I consider games like League of Legends free to play because they're free. Like, they don't cost anything to play. That's what I call free to play. Um, Guild Wars 2, Guild Wars, and many other games, uh, you have to purchase the game to play it. So yeah, it'll sit on their hard drives if they decide that they don't want to do anything with it. But I honestly believe that Guild Wars 2 will drive more interest in people's brains towards that game than back to World of Warcraft. Even though I do support WoW and their, um, their talent changes as far as PvP goes. There's another comment that he says where he says, uh, quote, actually, uh, he's talking about... <laughs> He's talking about me and SWOTOR. He's like, actually, you don't get it. How do you expect anyone here to take you seriously about SWOTOR when you didn't give the game the time of day? You claim to be an EverQuest old school, WoW old school player. Did you ever happen to realize that what went on in the first months of those games' existences? If you can't answer that, then you can't comprehend MMO launches in general. You're saying anything more about SWOTOR is not because you don't want to offend people. It's because you can't defend yourself. Actually, I can defend myself. Uh, this is how. The launch of a game that came out in the 90s and the launch of a game that came out in 2004, those events are significant to the time. It's 2012. I don't have a problem with SWOTOR if it has launch bugs in it, if there were just like holes in the beta that nobody figured out, or if there's new patch and here's a bug. Like, I don't have problems with that. I'm not gonna down, I'm not gonna say down with SWOTOR because of the, the bug with the Ilium or Ilum or whatever it is. And I didn't say that in the video. I said that this is a bug that people don't like, therefore they want to unsubscribe. And when you unsubscribe, here's a problem. And that has nothing to do with the game. That's on their website. So it's a poorly constructed game. It's a poorly constructed website. And when I say poorly, when I critique Swotor, I don't critique anything that there, when, I don't critique things that pop up with bugs. I critique things that are tools in the game, features in the game that aren't in the game, that should just be in the game. Now, again, if Guild Wars 2 doesn't have these same exact features, then it will, you will hear me say the same exact thing. If Guild Wars 2 doesn't have a target of target at launch, you will hear me complain. And why will I complain? Because I'm a PvPer. Target of target's pretty fucking important to me. Cool? You dig? Save, mate? God, I watched too much Pirates of the Caribbean. Speaking of which, a lot of you guys were saying Pirates of the Caribbean 4 is not worth watching. I, and 3 isn't worth watching. I watched 3. I had a blast. I watched 3. I just realized now that this isn't going to be a, a one-shot vlog. I'm just going to sit here and talk to you guys about this for, for a while because I'm running out of time. I wholeheartedly want to watch 4 just because of the ending of 3. I think 3 had a good ending. I think 3 wrapped it up really well. I'm still kind of like weird about certain elements in it like the whole calypso thing and stuff i won't i'm gonna try not to spoil anything but but um i liked all the characters in that movie it, it was great i enjoyed it immensely um i i sort of do agree with people that it's that it's one of the how they how they phrase it you know one of the last great adventure original adventure movies i, I do want to see four but i don't i don't want to spend the money on it, because I told you guys in the vlog, is this the, no, that's Dead Island. I told you guys in the vlog that I, um, the versions that I had got were DVD, two disc DVD Blu-ray. So you've got the DVD right here, and then, the, and then you've got the two disc Blu-ray, special features and the feature, bonus materials. And I don't have a Blu-ray player, but I figure I'll have a PS3 someday. I don't fucking know, but uh, I will I'll eventually have a PS3, and then I'll have a Blu-ray player. And actually, somebody was saying that, doesn't your computer have Blu-ray uh, disk drive? No, it does not. Oops, that sucks. I wish it did. When I bring up EverQuest and World of Warcraft, when I bring those up, I bring those up in the fact that I've seen how, how the games have grown and evolved into better games. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> and that's exactly what I said in the vlog. So if you can't understand that that's where I'm coming from, then I'm sorry that you know, that we don't have, we, we can't resonate on that same frequency, but I've, EverQuest sucked dick, <laughs> but it was all we had at the time, and kids were, we loved it, EverQuest was, by the way, $30 a month on the PC in the 90s, we played it, and we played it fucking a long time, and then I had EverQuest Online Adventures for the PS2, um, which was a graphical upgrade to EverQuest, same game, but just a graphical upgrade, and I think it was 500 years in the past, of Norath's past or something like that. 
Um, cause there was like the untamed, the untamed lands or whatever in the lower left corner of the map. It was this small world. I mean, it was this tiny world, no mounts. I mean, it was great, but that's, I mean, you could, I can even use mounts as an example of how, um, evolving, evolving an MMO makes fucking sense, right? Mounts in the game. Perfect. Um, there's a lot of talk about how flying mounts aren't going to be in Guild Wars 2 because it takes away from the scale of the game. Because uh, the, the beauty of the game and the art in the game, and, and if you were able to just fly right over it, then it takes away the sense of scale from the game. And you really don't, you don't, you're not like, you don't feel part of something bigger than what you are if you can just fly over it, you know what I mean? I like being able to fly. I think it'd be cool to see from that perspective, but I understand what people are saying. So we'll use mounts as an example. Let's say Swotor didn't have mounts. Would you defend Swotor then? Probably, probably, but mounts are one of those things that like should be in the game standard. And that's what I'm arguing against with Swotor. Shit that's not in the game, standard, it's 2012. 2011's when the game launched, it was in design for six years. But again, um, uh, Guild Wars 2, similar thing. Uh, hopefully by the time it launches, it will, uh, it'll have certain things on standard. I didn't turn my Skype on. Ooh, people are going to be mad at me. You're awake and you didn't turn your Skype on? We have to talk about things. Um, so anyway, Psycho Wetback, thank you for the comments. I appreciate that. I love having that kind of conversation. Um, and Zombie commented, this is actually funny because it's right below his comments. 122 hours with 60 minutes in an hour is 7,320 minutes. The average Dante channel gaming video is 15 to 20 minutes. So let's round up to 20 minutes. 7,320 divided by 20 equals 366 episodes. We'll be watching Terraria for a year. That's a lot of pixel pickaxe. Um, and I don't take this, I don't take any offense in this, uh, in this comment because there's no offense in it. It's just you doing the math and stuff and you're good buddy. The thing is you'll be, you, you will be, <laughs> this is how people usually do the, the, um, the math with other YouTubers, big, big name, popular YouTubers who are here to milk as much out of a game as they possibly can. Um, no offense to them, but my statement has always been, I'm a gamer first. I play these games. I don't sit here and go, I, Listen, could you sit and play a game for just 10 minutes at a time and then have to pause? No, <laughs> neither can I. So I can't sit there. So that's how many hours I've put into Terraria. Um, and if you look on my Steam, if, you guys, if any of you guys are friends with me on Steam, the Steam ID is Dantane2. Uh, you can send me a friend request. You can look at my Steam games. Hours played. Same with same with Skyrim. I put in tons of hours on Skyrim, like eighty something hours on Skyrim. But uh, I'm a gamer first. I'm not gonna sit here and milk every minute I play. And I said this the other day, even in, with Batman, I do retakes on Batman because I end up going into rooms that are just like, what's in here? Obviously not the goal. It's like another Riddler trophy or some shit. I don't give a flying rat's ass about the Riddler trophy. I want to play for the story. I want to fucking do the Batman the do. You know what I mean? So. Uh, I end up uh, doing retakes on some of the Batman episodes. Um, oh, speaking of the Batman episodes, you guys, when you guys do donated this um, this controller, first of all, I want to remind you, thank you very much. It's very, very um, much appreciated, but I have bad news. I don't know if it works. Oops, sorry. I don't know if it works in a, um, a PC because it doesn't download drivers, and I can't find any drivers for the model. So I don't believe that this will work on a on a um a PC. I've tried everything. I've tried resetting it. I've charged it. Um honestly, it'll just sit here and the circle the circle light will blink like this and nothing will happen. This is similar to what the first controller that I purchased did, the one that was uh see-through color, but I will save the controller and um if I ever get like see it'll the light'll turn green like that. I will save it, and if I ever get my Xbox running, or I get a new Xbox, what am I saying? Get it running. That one's never going to work ever again. I will definitely use this controller, so don't think for a minute that it's a wasted donation. I will definitely use it for something, for sure. Okay? I um, just wanted to update on that, and uh, that means that I might not be recording Batman for a while. So if you guys are huge fans of the Batman... Um, I'll try to get back to it as soon as possible. We'll see. February is going to be a really interesting month for me because that's when I get my first machinima check. So, um, again, part of my honesty. Hey, I just realized I told you something that I didn't really have to tell you, but I did. Oh, and as far as the censoring thing, censoring. Look, when I talked about it yesterday in yesterday's vlog about censoring myself and how I'm not going to talk about 
SWOTOR or talk uh, trash about it anymore. Uh, I mean, when I say that, I'm not saying that I'm going to not because it's a censoring issue. I don't want to censor myself to feel like, how do I word this properly? I'm not going to, I'm not doing this because I fear that there's retaliation because I'm going to be the guy on the internet who's not in support of SWOTOR and that I'm sitting here. The reason that I made that decision was because it was looking like every other day I had something to say about SWOTOR, something new or something rehashed or whatever. And I uh, ended up going on rants about it because I'm passionate about these kinds of things. Like, it just really irks me that these things aren't in the game. And there's probably more things that aren't in the game that I don't know about via the fact that I don't play the game. But, um, but I just wanted to quit bitching about it because I've done enough bitching about it. I've done enough topic brought ups about the game and topic brought ups. I've, I've talked enough about the problems that a majority of MMO player have with the game. And if you have half a brain, you give a shit about the production quality of the game to question the production quality of a multi-million dollar gaming company producing a game for you that is half-assed, then you agree. If you don't, then you don't. So I don't want to turn this into the, I'm going to talk about SWOTOR and talk shit about SWOTOR every day. Because, I mean, personally, I don't like it. I, it gets old to me. I see it when I edit the vlogs. It gets old to me. So I'm not going to talk about it anymore because it's boring to me to continue to talk about shit, garbage. That's the problem with uh, SWOTOR. There's plenty of cool things, and I've mentioned the things I like about SWOTOR, uh, the gameplay and everything. Um, but instead of being negative, I wanted to shift it to being positive and talking more about Guild Wars 2, a game that I'm excited about. Um, so that's why. So there's no censorship. It's, um, it's just a shift in uh, a majority topic, if you will. Uh, I'm going to have fun um, talking about it. And uh, Mascara PvP, I can't wait to hear what you think is stupid about Guild Wars 2. I know I'm going to laugh my ass off. Trust me, there are some things that I dislike about Guild Wars 2. I will talk about one thing that I know about in Guild Wars 2 that I really don't like. Um, the proposed uh, endgame PvP is different from WoW. And so let me explain. I'm really, really used to earning. Hello? My dog is freaking... Um, I'm really used to earning something as a reward at the end of a season uh, for PvPing. You know, like a 2200 weapon or um, a new set of gear. I, did, I, I do prefer the whole the way shit worked in Wrath, where everything looked better. And if you got higher rated, you had a better set of gear, not this recolor shit. But I'm willing to agree on a lot of things like... It keeps, it keeps PvP nice and fair. So Guild Wars 2 goes a step further and makes it nice and fair, but doesn't reward the player for um, having a high rating or being a highly achieved player or anything like that or being somebody who, you know, does, does work, son, in that game. So, you know what I'm saying? So, like, there's, there's no goal to grasp at. It's just, um, it's just, hey, here's a leaderboard, and these are the people who are the best on your leaderboards. That means you got to go to some website to see that shit. I like titles. I like I like things like Vanilla WoW, where you had titles. People go, "Wow, this guy's a this guy's a um, uh, a general." Okay, cool. That means he's like rank ten or whatever. That was cool. Um, and then it and then it went into um, gear, like having different color gear. And then it went into having different. It was a PvP set better than the last season. And then it moved into here's the same set but with a different color. Uh, and then it became really lazy. And and now it's the gear looks like shit. So, but. I have heard rumor that there are skins that you can acquire via having a high rating, if you will. I'm not sure how shit works in Guild Wars 2 as far as PvP goes. I haven't really read about the systems. I know there's world v. world v. world PvP, and then there's um, it's the competitive, more competitive PvP style. Um, I don't think there's an arena setting. I think these are all objective-based games, like like you know your you got your ABs and things like that. But there's there's other. Uh, th um, neat mechanics that go along with the game like inside the battleground so, sort of like hutball where hutball isn't just like kill a bunch of people hutball is more like a here's a ball the goal is to get it across the field but you can also kill people and it sort of helps get the job done that sort of thing um but i'll go into i'll go more into the the battlegrounds if you will about guild wars 2 later when i know more I want to have more of a complete understanding of what they are and stuff like that based on the information that's on the internet. So, but, um, yeah, 
that's something I dislike. I, I like to be rewarded. Give me something that makes me look a little different from the other players. You know, let me stand out as a as a player. That's really appealing to me. And I've heard the opposite of the coin, which is like, well, you just want a pat on the head from the game. And I go, well, yeah, I do. I mean, uh, granted, I feel like I need more of a pat on the head from the game when I do well in it in games like WoW when I pay for a subscription fee. But mostly if the game, that was really the counter argument <laughs> in, this, in this conversation that I had. The counter argument, argument was you're not paying for this game per month. Therefore, they don't owe you a, a, a better skin. They don't owe you a better set of gear to wear or whatever. And I'm all for not giving me a better weapon even. You know, don't give me a stronger weapon. Don't give me better gear. I'm all for that. Keep, keep the gear at a pretty even field because I know just like every other moderately skilled player because I'm not going to sit here I've never sat here and told you that I'm like a super skilled fucking player I will never tell you that but I take I take my understanding of the game's mechanics and how to to play it versus other characters and other classes seriously I actually sit and fucking read talents some people don't and that's the difference so um, and then among other things you know you practice and stuff uh, but I will never sit here and tell you I'm a super skilled player but I really really would like there to be a reward for people who do well in the game because, you know, let their hard work pay off. And so far, according to what I've heard, there is no such thing. It's just a leaderboard and it's a number board thing and whatever. And, and I'm like, okay. But then there's the rumor there might be some skins. There might be weapon skins um, that make you stand out. Maybe. But ArenaNet hopefully listens to their, their players and to their community like I've heard that they do. Because um, I know that they're a very community-invested game company. Uh, or not that not the NCSoft side, but the ArenaNet side. They fucking like listen to their. Oh, and here's the thing about NCSoft. Before I'm gonna end the vlog soon, but before I do, uh, here's the thing about Are about NCSoft. They they were the guys who made Aeon, Lineage, City of Heroes, Wildstar, X Teal, Guild Wars, and Aeon. So let's let's list off what we know. Aeon, that <laughs> fucking sucked. Um, City of Heroes. If you're into that kind of game, personally, the combat was not par. And the, the, the production quality was under par. Like, the way you played that game was just fucking under par. Lineage. Um, I have no opinion about Lineage. <laughs> didn't play it. x -Teal, never heard of it. Aeon, obviously. Guild Wars 1. And I've always touted that Guild Wars 1 was kind of like a, you know, kick it up a notch a bit, and then it could be a better game. But it, you couldn't even jump. I mean, I know that's a pain in the ass. I know that's a null argument and whatever, but they they were they really gave a shit about their PvP. So you're looking at a company that has made a, f a, a couple of, quote-unquote, if you will, failed MMORPGs. These guys know what doesn't fucking work. Okay? So they're going to... they have. <laughs> I have stuff to show you guys. Just trust me. I have stuff to show you guys. These people are really behind what they fucking believe in in their game. Um, but uh, the other side of the coin, hey, guess what? Guild... Uh, not Guild Wars, but Star Wars Galaxies. Kind of not a successful game. I mean, that's the facts. So then there you go. You got Star Wars Galaxies. And there's a lot to learn from there. Before I let you guys go, I just wanted to link a couple things that'll be down below for you. I had uh, somebody else in the comments link something about something called ScriptCraft, which apparently is a private server that has everything hand-scripted just like a Blizzard server from the vanilla ages. So everything is exactly like it should be from vanilla. From the PvP to the PvE, you can go to ScriptCraft. Something, something to check it out. I'm actually going to link a video of them doing Molten Core. Scriptcraft 1.12, I'm running out of time, holy fuck. And um, go check it out if you're interested. I'm not really sure what Blizzard thinks about these kinds of servers. To be honest, this one's not really getting any monetary gain. They don't have a donations thing. They don't have a, you have to pay to become a member. Um, it's just there. Again, I don't know how Blizzard feels about this sort of thing, so I'm not sure how long this is going to be around for. Another thing I want to talk about was um, uh, the, the, next at, the, the next online piracy act that we need to look at called open uh open stands for and this is kind of stupid i don't know why they named it open it's uh it's the online protection and enforcement of digital trade act of 2012. there's a difference between this bill and the sopa pippa bills um facebook google and other companies uh linkedin twitter and others are behind this bill because it is a very well thought out bill it actually gives the power to 
send people to jail over infringing copyright instead of, uh, you know, actually having proof that copyright is being infringed upon before putting them in jail. Instead of just going, you're sharing files on the internet, crawl, you're going to jail, you know what I mean? So that's cool, I'll have that as a link for you today. Um, I'm, gonna le I'm gonna learn more about open, uh, the open act a lot more over time. This is what I do know, it was proposed the day of the uh, internet blackout protest. So, but anyway, thanks for watching this daily vlog. Click the antate top right, see you in the next vlog. Don't forget about junk and stuff. Leave me a reply, video response, comment, whatever. Hit like before you leave and get crit. Gah! Team break. <laughs>